Hello, my name is Lynn Mars, and I'm a clinical research coordinator here at AI DuPont Hospital for Children. I've been here uh, about 11 years, and I'm an RN, have been an RN for many years. I'm here to talk to you about the role of the study coordinator in clinical research. And basically, we do everything from soup to nuts and everything in between. The standards for conducting research, we abide by the Code of Federal Regulations, and there is a book out there that you can get by the FDA, and it, it will talk to you about everything um, related to research. Protection of human subjects is the most important thing that we have to follow, and the scope of this uh, regulation contains procedures and requirements governing the use of investigational new drugs, including procedures and requirements for conducting research. The regulation is mandated by the FDA. So they can come into our hospital at any time and check our research out to make sure we're following the regulations. The principal investigator is responsible for the oversight and conduct of the clinical trial. Uh, the study coordinator provides organization and assists with the oversight of the study to help ensure that the CFR is being followed. Most often, the study coordinator becomes the right hand of the principal investigator. Good clinical practice guidelines. We follow these guidelines. Um, it's very important when you're conducting research to have an idea and understanding of what they are. Good clinical practice is an international ethical and scientific quality standard for designing, conducting, recording, and reporting trials that involve the participation of human subjects. Compliance with the standards provides the public assurance that the rights, safety, and well being of the study patients are protected, consistent with the principles that have their origin in the Declaration of Helsinki. The study coordinator is familiar with good clinical practice guidelines and what is expected in conducting a good, complete clinical trial study. Types of research. The research categories are pharmaceutical sponsored studies, NIH and government funded studies, investigator initiated studies, registries, compassionate and emergency use studies. The significance of having an experienced study coordinator is conducting in conducting a successful clinical trial. It's very important if you're going to do a study um, to have an experienced coordinator. That person basically in helps ensure that the study is going to be run right. And then a lot of times the PIs are really busy, so having somebody else behind the scenes really helps. Pre study, the study coordinator works with the PI and the Office of Sponsor Projects to complete a clinical trial agreement. Uh, she reviews the study protocol and works with the Office of Sponsor Projects to create a budget. The budget is key uh, to getting your study run the right way, and uh, you don't want to run out of money. You want to be able to pay each department that you're using um, so that they'll continue to do the research with you. The coordinator assists with the IND or IDE application to the FDA. The regulatory piece is uh, the coordinator will help the PI complete the FDA 1572 uh, form, which is the investigator's agreement, collects signed and dated CVs from the PI and co-investigators, verifies that the research team members are all, all up to date with their city training, um, Anyone that's on a trial that's going to be doing anything needs to do this um, city training, and, it, and you have to re-up the training every three years. She will also collect the financial disclosure forms from the study team. Um, creates and maintains the regulatory binder. The regulatory binder can be one to four binders. It grows and grows. It does consist of the following sections, and it depends on what your study is about. You may not need some of these things, but I, I included everything. You're gonna to wanna to have the protocol in the binder, the final protocol, protocol amendments, protocol signature pages. There should be an investigator brochure that's for drug studies, and it, and it explains what the study drug does, uh, and these are generally 
drugs that have not been FDA approved. The essential documents section should have the 1572 form. It should have the CVs and licensors of the PI, COI, study coordinator, director of the lab. When you're collecting these, you need a wet signature and date. So you can't just have them send them to you. They have to actually sign a date or when the study monitor comes, she's gonna ask you to uh, get them to sign and date them. Any IRB approval um, for your study and correspondence, you'll have a section for that. You'll also have an, a section for internal and external correspondence. Local lab, uh, if you're doing labs uh, out of the hospital, um, you're gonna want their CLIA and CAP certifications. Also a copy of normal lab values. Uh, there should be a section about the investigational product, shipment of receipts, manual of procedures for handling, dispensing, administration instructions, device drug accountability logs. You do this in collaboration with the research pharmacist. Uh, her name is Lisa Brown. Oftentimes she has some of these documents in her area in the pharmacy. You will have a section about serious adverse events procedures for reporting a serious adverse event, the SAE forms, SAE reports, safety letters filed to the FDA. These report forms, uh, normally there's a section there for how to complete the, the C CRF, and a lot of times they're electronic. Also a copy of the source documents. You should have a section for master logs, meaning uh, screening and enrollment logs, the delegation of authority log, monitoring, visit log, and a miscellaneous section. Pre-study, um, you're gonna do the initial study application and it's submitted to the IRB via the IRB net. Completion of the study application consists of the following. There's an initial application form. You're gonna upload that into IRB net, complete that and upload it. The study protocol needs to go in there, the investigator brochure, FDA approval letter for the IND or IDE, financial disclosure forms and research agreement forms from uh, your study team. If you're doing an industry-sponsored study, they require, they have their own forms that have to go to the sponsor. You're going to upload your consent documents, your parental permission form, and assent documents. There, if you're doing a study drug trial, you need to have a pharmacy application addendum um, completed, and the research pharmacist will sign your IRB net package um, indicating that she's approved the submission. If you're doing anything outside of standard of care as far as x-rays or um, MRIs, the Radiation Safety um, Committee has to approve the research, noting um, submission to the IBC if applicable, any labs that if you're shipping any labs out, or even if you're doing labs in the hospital, they want to know about it. So you'll have to do an IBC application and uh, they will send you a, an approval form. Uh, any recruitment material, advertisements with documentation of marketing approval. The marketing department has to review your advertisements. They put the Nomura's logo on it oftentimes, and um, that's important um, to have them do that before you submit and get the approval. Uh, any study questionnaires need to be uploaded into the IRB net. Study initiation. This is uh, after receiving IRB approval, you can go ahead and start your study. The first thing you want to do is conduct a study initiation meeting. Uh, oftentimes, if the study monitor will come if it's an industry-sponsored study. I want to invite the study team members to attend this meeting. First thing to do uh, is to get obtain the research team member's signature on the study delegation log. If you do this during the initiation meeting, you will not have to run around looking for these folks later. So I would say that's the first thing you should do. And then you're going to do um, study training and review the protocol. You're gonna review the manual of procedures for study and labs, review schedule of study visits and study procedures, review the source documents. 
or if, the, if your study didn't come with source documents, you will have to develop some kind of documents so you make sure that you're doing everything during that study visit, that you don't miss something. Uh, you're going to review the ECRF documentation um, and also the good clinical practice guidelines. Um, during the study, the coordinator will recruit patients, oftentimes obtain the parental permission and child assent. Um, it's good to note that this is not just a signature, it's an ongoing process. So if the study's gonna last about a year, um, each time the patient comes in, you have to ask them, how's it going? Are they comfortable? Do they wanna continue? Uh, just a five minute brief thing, and then you can go on your way and complete the visit. Um, when you do obtain the consent forms, you must give them a copy of the signed consent. Parents should get receive a copy of that. Um, the coordinator also screens the patients. You should know the inclusion exclusion criteria uh, really well so you don't sign somebody up who is really not eligible. Once you make sure they do meet the study requirements, you're going to enroll the patient to the study if he or she meets the study eligibility. Uh, after that, you're gonna teach the patients about the study procedures, what's gonna happen at each visit. Um, they're gonna to have to complete questionnaires. You'll show them that, <clears throat> how to take the study medication, if they need to fill out a food diary. There's a lot of different things that they may, may be doing during the study. The study coordinator also schedules the study visits. Um, oftentimes we complete the study procedures. If the patient needs to come in for a particular test or the study um, visit, you're going to uh, schedule that uh, in advance with radiology, with the pain medicine, pharmacy, or the EKG department. Um, the coordinator obtains lab samples. Um, generally, you know, you um, will either have the day medicine nurses um, obtain those. You don't really have to draw them yourself or send them to the lab. Um, and also you're gonna coordinate with the lab personnel for processing and shipment of samples that they have to go out. Tracking and maintaining study budget and payments so accounting can invoice the sponsor for completed work. That's really, really important. We do this on a monthly basis. Uh, for each study that you're in charge of, you need to uh, indicate on a um, Excel spreadsheet you send it to the uh, accounting department. You're going to indicate each uh, study procedure that was done so they can actually invoice the study sponsor. So important because if you don't do that, you may not get paid by the sponsor. And again, the financial part is, is very important because we don't want to um, do this without getting reimbursed um, because it, it costs research costs money. Um, the study coordinator maintains adequate inventory of study supplies. You need to know if your if your um, blood tubes are getting ready to expire. You're going to want to have them ahead of time before they expire, so you want to keep track of that. Um, study coordinator also completes the source documentation, so documenting that the study procedures were done, um, documentation of the lab values, whatever you've done during the study visit should be in a Generally, I have a small binder and I have the, you know, I have each visit number, like if it's visit one, visit two, and have all the information behind that, those tabs. Um, again, once you complete the source document, you have to do an electronic case report if it's an industry study, um, uh, industry sponsored study. Metadata Grave is a database that we use a lot. And so you have to take whatever you have. Um, insert it in your source documentation and then put it into the spreadsheet. Um, documenting AEs, that's adverse events or serious adverse events, and reporting to the IRB as needed. During the study and conducting the research, the study monitor visits, if you're doing industry sponsored study, the pharmaceutical will assign a monitor to come out and check your work periodically. It's usually every six weeks. Um, if you have patients enrolled. And she will come out here, she will come out and they will look at your source documents, compare them to the electronic case reports to make sure that they are accurate. Uh, 
when the person comes out to review your study records, make sure the regulatory binder, your source documents, and ECRFs are available to the monitor. Coordinating the meetings uh, for the monitor to visit the pharmacy and PI is also a responsibility of the study coordinator. During the study, um, you may have to do additional IRB submissions, depending on the length of your study, or if, say, the sponsors changed uh, the protocol and added a few things. Before you can include whatever's been added to your study, an amendment has to go into the IRB and they have to approve the amendment before you can do any of those uh, additional things. Annually, you have to do a continuing review report and submit it to the IRB. They want to know how your study's going, how many patients you've enrolled, have patients um, dropped out, and what have you. There's a form in the IRB net, you can find that, fill it out, and submit it. It usually should be done 60 days beforehand. So if you're getting it in the last minute, you know, the IRB does not like that, and sometimes you, you just will not get it approved you might have to halt your research. I mean, you can continue with the patients you have, but you would not be able to um, enroll anyone else until you get that approval. Um, when you're finished the study and the sponsors come out, uh, reviewed everything, then you will enter a study closure report. That again is in the IRB net form section, and then you just upload it um, as a new package into the IRB net and tell the IRB basically that it's closed and, you know, there's, you just follow the, uh, the form. Study closure. Uh, you're going to host the study closure meeting with the study monitor. So any coordinator, we, we set up this meeting, study monitor comes out. Complete and end of study procedures. So she checks to make sure everything's been completed you have all of your documents in place. And um, also there's on your study delegation log, you're gonna enter the date of study completion. Uh, you're gonna submit that study closure report to the IRB. Store your regulatory binders, source documents, MOP, and a secured location per study agreement requirements. Most of the time they require anywhere up to five to 10 years. So we have a, a space where we just house everything. We, we you know, put the title of the study on it, put it in a um, banker's box and load it up. And after 10 years, we discard most of the time. Any questions? Okay. I guess that's all. Thank you.